Okay, everybody see the screen? So here's the tap. Now on the tap, um, does anybody want to tell me what we what we want to do on the defensive tap? You want me to just go ahead? You got man mark. mark. Team. Yeah, we want we want to get right out and mark our guys, and that, and that's going to look a little weird to some of you, but there's a reason for it. If this is Noah, the striker right here, if he if he presses the ball right away, right? Where's the rest of our – are we going to go past him? No, right? He's a striker, right? So where's the rest of our team going to be? Playing it in our own end, and that's not a way to start a game. You want to get out of your end. So offensively, you've probably seen, seen high-level seen high teams when they have a tap, they play it back. They would play it back to like Ian here, and he would just send it down. And the reason they do that is they're not trying to necessarily score a goal right away. What they're trying to do is get in your end right away. They're trying to get in your end, and they want to play in your half of the field. And so it's the same thing defensively. We want to, we want to get, we don't want to pin ourselves artificially in our own end. So we want our striker, we all know he's going to go after playing himself here. Take these two players out of the game. We want the eight and ten. Here, here's their six, eight, ten. You see them? It's pretty clear what they are, right? Six, eight, ten. Everybody see it? Left back, right back. Okay. Left wing, right wing, forward. So right away, our ten should be running out here. Our eight should be here. Should be here. Sorry, I had to let Victor in. Our ten, our eight, and our six. And and, and, and you know that means yeah. Our six was Gavin. It's going to feel weird going out there, but that's okay because in a game, if we're pinning them in, where's our – if we're pinning them in their own end, where's our six going to be? If we're in their whole side of their pitch, possessing, and they're they're in a deep lot, where, where are we – where's our – our six is going to be there. It's exactly where he's going to be, right? Our center backs are going to be here. Our fullback's going to be here, right? We're going to pin them in. So, open – it's okay. I know it's going to feel weird at first, but it shouldn't feel that weird. So I got a question. This is going to sound kind of silly, but let's say one of their midfielders gets the ball off the tap. Should Noah just run past them and not even like try to defend them and just go mark his man? Or so It's a great question. So I like to tell our guys, ignore them, ignore it. Like if, because the reality is they'd have to be a pretty bad team to turn it over there right there. Right. And even if they do, where's Noah going? You know what I mean? Let's say Noah gets it. Where's he going? He's going to the to the center back. Yeah, I mean, we get the ball. That's oh, great. What are, you, what are you asking? Yeah, like if we steal it, we're not countering on this. They're, you know what I mean? So the, the most we'll do is get the ball is what I'm saying, right? So if he feels like it's an obvious – he can make what I call like a – give it the old college try, you know what I mean, as he's passing by to make a steal. But he shouldn't stand there. So as he's going by the guy, he can like make a stab at it, but just keep going. Does that make sense? Like go right through him. You follow me? Or not? Does everybody yeah. understand? Yeah. yeah. Like in other words, he shouldn't stand there and, and jockey between these two guys. That's not what we want. If this guy gets the ball, he can run right through the guy. I don't even care if he fails him. If the guy wants to hold on to the ball, fail him. As long as you don't get a card, right? But, you know, put pressure on that guy, but run right through him. Right. And then maybe he panics if you run right at him. Maybe he panics, plays this guy, then keep running at this guy. And then, then he plays this center back. And now, now he's doing, now he's where we want him. Does that make sense? Like, I want you to get out, get us out of there. It's the same thing with the winger. I want the winger out there on the fullback. So now, when, if we do win the ball, so now if we get out there and my winger is on the fullback, and my other winger is on this fullback, and my striker is on this guy, and my 10 is made to here, now, if we win the ball, are we in a good position to counter? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, so that's what we want. Does that make sense, everybody? Everybody okay with that? You can argue with me. Okay, good. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm going to skip to the second half to make a lot of people happy. All right, so that should take us to about mm – -hmm. let's go to right about here. This should be the second half, right, 19 to 45 minutes. Um, that's uh, 20 and for about 65, 65 minutes would be, the, would be the end of the half. 
All right, and then uh, so let's go over here. Would be halftime. Good. Yep. Same. So let's start the half. They don't really grant extra minutes for Stabas, right? Um, I don't know. In this game, they did. Let's not worry about that right now, though. It's not really a tactical thing. That's after tactical. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we extra time for what? Stoppages like fouls, oh. injuries. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now it's our ball, and it's the same thing, all right? We want to we want to get out. We want to get out so we're not playing on our own. What we don't want here is our wingers immediately checking back. Because if we play this ball to Ian, right, is this an, is that what's called an open ball situation? Does everybody know what an open ball is? I'll quickly yes. say it. Yeah, he can play forward. So when you can play forward, do, do you check in or do you make runs? Make a run. Make runs. So it, it it's just the rule that the principles of our play apply even on attack. All right. So we want to get out and get out of our end and play in their half of the pitch. That's how we're going to score. Unless we want to be a counterattacking team. There is if you guys want to be a counterattacking team, I don't. We would we would give them the ball and sit back. Let them play with a high line, play with a deep block, and look to launch Preston forward. And that would be our game plan. I I don't want to I don't want to do that, right? It's not I don't I don't think Kensington, that's not us, right? We want to possess the ball, we want to be in their end, and we wanna we wanna dominate games. So let's let's watch what we do and we'll just critique it and then we'll move on. Look, Preston looks like look at Preston. He's ready to go. So, he, so Preston does go. You guys must have planned this ahead of time. <laughs> I think that, I think Ian, I think I think has got Ian written all over. All right. So now, and it's great. We're in our, we're in our, is that you, Ian? I'm going to put him to sleep. But that, that was, uh, so that was good. I'm fine with that. If that's what you just want to do, all the power to it. Everybody saw what we did. Just that's, you see that every weekend in uh in the Premier League. All right, so now we're we're playing out here. This is what I say. This isn't a goal kick, but the goalie has it. This gives us time to mark up. We we're gonna focus on the defense until I see something on offense that I want to focus on. You know, we got to be able to mark up here. That's gonna be. You'll know we're you know we're on our way to our our man marking system when we can when the first. The first thing we'll start doing right is on is on special kicks, punts, um, free kicks, like a goal kicks. Um, that's when we'll because that's that's easy to mark up because you have extra time to, to get set. So let's watch and see how we do. Oh, I think we lost Dean and got him back. So that was definitely Aiden. So right here, you can see whoever the striker is is already going on the two the two. Um, okay. So it's looking good, but I already see a problem and see if someone can be an A student here and see someone. Well, they, they, their three center mids are, I'm, I'm the only guy next to any of them. Yeah. So you can already see that. And this is okay, guys. As we're learning this new system, it's man marking. In a, in a zone, you might already drop that far. So we just got to get out of that habit. So I, I understand why we're doing that. That's what you normally do. They're not being, they're not being lazy. They're, our guys aren't being lazy. They're not being stupid. They're just, this is like what they're used to. Okay. We have to, we have to develop a new pattern. But so at the see, same time, the ball's coming long. Like, are you supposed to just be like all up in his ass right there? Like, yeah. because that's why we have to, like for me, I want, I want us to trust our players. We have an extra player back there and we're man marking all of their forwards. So every one of their forwards will be covered with one of our, back someone from our back line and our six so and we're gonna have an extra player in the back we're gonna have a libero right so yes. you gotta trust like picture if the libero i know gian's young so he's still learning so picture if the libero is t-ben right everybody trusts t-ben back there right are you afraid well should we have any fear if, if t-ben has no man mark at all so he's ready to just pick up any any loose balls and everyone and you got gavin marking Jason marking, right? Ian marking, 
we shouldn't be we shouldn't be nervous. That's enough. You, know, no, you don't need you don't need to double team them. Cool. It's just your first instinct is to step yeah. back, not to step yeah. forward. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I said it, it's it's just a habit we're gonna have to break. Uh, because you can see now um they're gonna have open players, right? Um, so Jim, yeah, just guess. just for my knowledge of Bacello, you're doing the right thing here. I think it's just important to keep reminding myself and our guys that we are looking to be plus one at the back. So inherently, if you are to drop in immediately, you're giving them the advantage by building out. Whereas when we do immediately put bodies on those numbers, even if they play long, that is exactly why we play plus one. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. We have the plus one. We, we, we don't care if they play long. It plays right. Ian said it right there. We are always plus one. Other systems that you guys have played in are ve are very good systems, like a four four two zonal on zone on defense, right? And you could you could play a four three three on offense with the, with the same team when you transition offense. Four four two zone doesn't ha inherently have a plus one in the back. You 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 would be fine. You guys played in, some of you guys played in college and high level where you're okay if there's two strikers, one striker each covered by your by your center backs, right? You don't necessarily have a problem with that, right? So this actually is extremely conservative in the back, right, for long balls. We always keep a plus one, to, to Ian's point. We're safer than probably any system you've ever played in for long balls from the opposition. Does everybody see that a little bit or is on the way to seeing that? We're very conservative. We get that, we get that plus one by being minus one at the top by using a cover shadow, right? So. This is probably too far back, right? Everybody agree? Like, we're this is not what we want, right? <laughs> it's like it's a, uh, um, you know, we would want, we can call it out right now. I mean, we we don't want this. Okay, let's see if we start to fix it as we go. But like at the moment the ball struck, it's like we have plus one. I mean, this is fine, but is there? Any, Hams is fast. Does he need to be this far back? With when he has a, a libero there, no, right? He does not. He doesn't need to give them that much space. Because if the ball is played short, there's a the, the, the quote I want you to think of is here's what I want you to say. If it's not enough, you can want to, to, to intercept the ball, but you can't if you're not there. So we want to intercept, we want to win the ball. He cannot, he can win the ball back, Hamza, right here, right? But can Hamza win the ball here? If that punt, if, the, if that guy chip like did a little bit of a chip here. Can Hamza win that ball? Even if he wants to, it's not enough to want to win it. He's at a huge disadvantage. Okay. Here, two yards. You need, you, you, not, you not only need the desire to intercept the ball, but you need to position yourself to win the ball in the front or the back. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It's not enough just to be in position to win a ball over the top. That's what the libero is for. We have to be up on our guys. We want to start with intercepting the ball in front. That is our system that we're going to play. You can still win it behind. All right. You Hamza could still run with this guy. And but more than likely, he won't even, he'll still run with him, but Gian will win it anyway. We want to win the ball in front. Does everybody understand that? Is that can I stop saying that? Are we good for that for now? Yes. Just give me a thumbs up or something. Yep. Okay. So you can see this is bad. We want we would want Hamza here on the when this ball is being released, right? Uh, we would want this is John the center back, so right back on the winger, closer here. Okay, um, left back should have been on this guy. This this player should have been here. Okay, this is fine. All right, and then I lost track here. Uh, this guy would have been here, I think. Right? Is that or is that a blur? Yeah. I know there's a guy there. Okay. So we're, we're missing some, but we're completely missing someone somewhere. Um, so it's bad. We, there's really no reason. It, I'm not even going to fix this because it was so messed up that like I would spend the whole time trying to fix this. So it's like, we, we got, we can't get in situations where we're just completely off. Right. Does everybody, you everybody understand what I'm saying? This is way too hard to fix on the fly way too many guys not not where they're supposed to be okay this guy's actually just be all the way up here and then everybody would be stepping up one level 
right? Okay, yeah, it would have been, the shift would have been up here, and then this guy goes up to this guy, and this guy would go to this guy because T-Ben has that guy. So we have to get it straight quickly. So, so let's not argue after plays. And Okay, so here's a little tip. Don't argue with the ref after a play. Get marked up. Don't talk about where the guy should have went with the ball offensively after a play. Get marked up. You dig what I'm saying? Get marked up. Okay. So we'll let it play and we'll we'll give her okay. Okay, now we have the ball. Freeze. Let's talk about offense. Okay. Man marking scheme. If you're doing the man marking correctly, right? While we're on defense. Are you going to already be close to the defend to the defender? Essentially, you're basically kind of marked. Does everybody understand that? What I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So it it's going to make you better soccer players because it's going to require you during the entirety of the game and practice to constantly be thinking about unmarking yourself. You're not going to get many freebies. When you play a zonal system, you're playing 10 yards off your opponent. And you're not coming up to them until they until they're the ball's in transit. So if you're if, if the ball is one when you're sitting back 10 yards, you're already unmarked. You don't even have to move to receive the ball. In this system, you're gonna have to learn the intricacies of unmarking yourself. Now we have some have several players already unmarked because they maybe, but we've not really. Not really. We well, actually Preston, did Preston, good job. Preston's kind of yeah, he did a good job. He did a good job. So we're actually, I think we started to fix ourselves, right? Marcelo has two guys. Um, that's one of the problems. But let's let's not be too harsh on ourselves. Like like we said, it was everyone's trying, right? And that that free kick really threw us off where we were we were off by several players. So overall, we're trying to do it. You know what I mean? Just I need everybody to understand that the more people that can mark up quickly, the easier you make it for the guy who who's trying to figure out who his man is. Because then it's like process elimination. He's like, oh, shit, I, that, that's the only guy left. You know what I mean? Um, and we can maybe switch off and get, and get set. So, right. so if, if, if somebody's not marking their man and you, you see yourself with, with an extra man, do you just what, – what the fuck do you do? Do you pick a man or do you – yeah, Okay, great question. In that instance, let's say we don't have the ball yet. They, they didn't come to the – the guys didn't get the ball, but I'm just saying hypothetically. So you would go behind both of them. So you would just stall. You would stall. Yeah, consider even if those guys don't have the ball, if they have the ball, it's 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 we we teach right. We talk about uh, don't step into a two v one. If they if they don't have the ball, like in this sense, let's pretend that the other team still has the ball, Marcelo, and you find yourself with two. Drop behind, treat it like a two v one. Drop behind both. Okay, you so you do, this, you do the same thing if they have the ball as you would if they don't have the ball. Yeah, like it's it's just it's just safer. And then like in this scenario, Marcelo, let's say this guy did get the ball. You could actually now cover shadow from this guy and press him. And now you just gain back the advantage for us, even without help. Does that make sense what I just said? Yeah. If you can cover shadow, cover shadow. Yeah. You don't want to cover shadow back here <laughs> because you're leaving a guy open in a dangerous area and he might bounce past it past you. But up here, it's kind of worth the risk a little bit. Like if you went up on this guy, this guy had the ball. If you go up on him, then Preston's job would be to make sure that this guy couldn't pass to him and bounce pass it to the guy you're leaving open. Does that make sense? I would have to see it. But let's see if, if anybody covers shadows during this this uh, footage, just make sure you point it out. Yeah, we'll show it. So not, that's not too bad. It was, it was the unmarking. The point that I was making with the unmarking was you can unmark forward, which is not something guys are used to. Because you're right up there, right up on them there's now a forward on marking that's really tempting for us because when you're 10 yards off of your mark in a zone, let's say, for instance, uh, I'm going to make this point really, really quick. Um, let's pretend that this is an opposition player and we win the ball right now. For this player to unmark forward, he's giving the opposition player in blue, let's pretend this is someone from another team, right? He's giving him 10 yards. To run, and he's going to have to run past him. Though. It's just not – you're giving him too big of a head start. But picture now, Marcelo is right on this guy. If we won the ball right now, Marcelo can quickly mark forward. And you saw him do it at some point in the game. I don't know 
we'll get a little more advanced with this. We'll show when he did it. He actually on March forward. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 an opportunity in this system because we're playing so close to guys. You can unmark forward instead of just sideways and back. All right, so let's let this play. Okay, we have the ball. We should be on marking now, right? Um, if we're not going to make the run right here, this is something that I'm, I'm also saying. We, if we're going to possess the ball, we need to get with, guys. All right? So T-Ben has the ball right now. We don't – if there's something on, sure, play it. But the, we, they're, they're, they're going to – when you, we first win the ball, of course, play it forward. But we want to open up into an offensive shape and try to stretch them out. So let's let it play. And if nothing's on, play it back. Okay, this is a perfect example. Freeze it. Now, okay, T-Ben was able to – he really he recognized that there was nothing on. So what did he do? Played it back. Let's get in our offensive shape. Very important if we're going to be a possession team and not just a counterattacking team. All the team, almost all the teams we play, guys, they do not open up into an offensive shape for possession. They, 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 if they play the ball back, it's just temporary to basically launch it forward, okay? Because they stay very narrow. All right, or they'll only get wide on the ball side. They won't get, they won't get wide on the weak side. Um, and and that's not necessarily a bad strategy for, by them. It's it means that they don't have to transition uh, back into a defensive shape because they're already in one when they lose the ball. We're going to have to transition back because we are going to open into an offensive shape. We are going to spread the field, which means when we lose it, you can't stay there. Now you got to you got to quickly hustle back in. So we're going to open up like an umbrella, close, open up, close. Okay. That's going to differentiate us from a lot of the amateur teams around here. You, we're going to try to play like the big boys. All right, like the, you know, because we're going to treat ourselves like a big club. So we need to open up. And it's not good enough to be what I call, I can say ass in the tactical, half ass wide. You got to be on the touchline. You got to be on the touchline. You can't be almost there because it's not about you being open. Okay. It's not about you being open. Okay. It's about can you move the opposition player? further away to create a gap is Hamza open here is he open yeah and I'm fine with if Hamza wants to stay inside that's fine but then what where does he have to be what yeah we this is Man City does this they play with what's called inverted fullbacks where the fullbacks play in the half space a lot but they do that with a wide winger you can't have an inverted fullback and an inverted winger or you're a counterattacking team. Plain and simple. You are not a possession team. So then we can't yell. I'm gonna, this is important. You cannot complain to the center backs or the six or the midfielders or the striker for not being able to hold on to the ball or do stuff or possess it if the winger is not – spreading the field and creating gaps for those guys to operate. Can't do it. So don't do it. We're going to fix this first. This has to be fixed first before we get one complaint about look at it, look at this. Look how compact this is. How are we going to how are we going to play in there? Can we play into this mess? Should we play into this? No, absolutely not, right? Look at this defense. Two center backs. Two CDMs, a box around our nine and our 10. There's no, you're not getting a ball through there. If you try to do it, it's going to be a turnover and we're going to get countered. So the solution is to get out wide, draw this guy out. Okay, so this is a problem right up there. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Give me a thumbs up. This yes. Is not, this is not controversial. Good. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. So we, we look, and now we play it over, okay? But I don't know why we're doing this, right? This is not a high line anymore, is it, guys? But no. why But why did he do that? 
what, what was he looking at? Yeah, he could have played the Hamza. But once he got to Hamza, did Hamza have anything? No. Hamza only could play to Preston's feet. That's fine. But there wasn't really anything going on there. Just, okay. If he did play to Hamza, where did Hamza go? He disappeared. He went wide on us. Right? The most he could do there, this guy follows. That's fine. Hamza gets it here. What we would have done is Hamza would have been wide. We play it to Hamza. Okay. Preston check can check in if he wants or make the run. That's fine. But, you know, ideally, Preston would have been here. And then that would have allowed our 8 and 10, or 8 or 10, to make a run into the gap created between the center back and the fullback, or at least create more space. Okay. So we have to get that down, guys. All right. I mean, this is, this is what. And then, and then guys are yelling at me, we play the ball deep too much. Well, yeah, everything's tied together. You know, we got to get width. We're not going to possess it. So John shouldn't have played that ball, but Preston should have been wide. So he, he should have given um, John better, our center back, better, um, better options. Center backs are told to play safe. So he didn't like what he saw. All right, now we've lost the ball. Okay. This is something interesting here. Someone tell me what Preston can do right now. Cover shadow. Cover shadow. Who said that? Me. Who's me? Um, I, Ivan. I'll say your name. Um, all right. Cover shadow. Perfect opportunity. You can double a guy if you come from a cover shadow. We gave up a goal later because we tried to double someone. Do not double players unless you are taking out don't double people unless you're unless it's safe. It's not it's not safe to double people without without this is fine to double. We're not in a dangerous area. You can always double here. We're fine. But why not double from a cover shadow? Right? If he double if he okay, double from the cover shadow. Same thing here. He could come in and double this, but he should come where? Here and in. Here and in. All right. He could, I would rather him step immediately here and cut this lane off. Take that away. Right now, that's gone. All right, immediately take this away. Now that's gone. All right, then he's got to panic. Okay, sort of look like leads there. What's that? Yeah, sort of look like leads defense there. Yeah, exactly. All right, this we sh we don't want to come off of this guy. We want to stay on him. Don't we don't want to release him like that. Okay, we want to stay on his ass. All right, because you know unless unless. They're yelling at you from behind that you need to get back because there's trouble, but there's really no reason um, here. Um, that, that's a rarity. We should be fine. Like these guys could have ran back instead. Keep pressure on the ball. We have to, we, well, you heard me tell Noah early in the game, go keep going through the ball. Like once, once you're pressing the ball, continue. All right. So, so everybody understand that part. Don't release the guy. Okay. Right here, come up, press it. Don't, you know, you don't need to get beat, but go up and press him because he is facing us. Press him. We should all be doing what right now while they have the ball. This gives us a chance to do what? How long have they had the ball for? Let's find out. Okay. It's on 22. So let's count how long we had because this is important to test ourselves the next tactical. Let's find out how long we had to get marked up. Okay, eight seconds. It's eight seconds in, guys. Should that have been enough time to get marked up? Everybody agree, right? Yeah. That's all. I mean, eight seconds. Somebody could have ran half the pitch. No, no lie. They could literally have ran 50 yards. Okay. So let's count the unmarked. Okay, unmarked. All right. Marked. We want him closer. And, and, and he's got a mark, but we talked about this. If this ball is slipped through, can he intercept it? Can he, can he want to intercept it? Yes. But is he in position to intercept it? Yes or no? No. No. Right on. In position to intercept. we got to get closer on the markings. We're not covering the channels. Okay? 
because now he can play this ball here. Can you intercept the ball here? No. If he plays here for him to run onto, no. Here. On him. Then if he plays the ball to feet, step in front and intercept it. If he misses, what does, what does this player do? He has a 2v1. What does he do? Just delay. Just delay until, until Preston recovers back, which won't take long. So we're, we're playing super aggressive, but we have a safety mechanism. Super aggressive. Use the safety mechanism. Super aggressive. Use the safety mechanism. And the ultimate safety mechanism is the libero. Okay, so we've got to play with more confidence that you can be on the guy. We got to get out of that like zonal system mindset where you have to drop seven, 10 yards back. And then we'll start intercepting more balls. All right. And it's actually detrimental right now to play that far back because look how we're not in a zone, right? We're not playing like a 4-4-2 block. So by playing off, it's just, there's just too many holes. So we're actually like a really shitty defense here. We're not really man marking and we're not playing a zone. So it's like really bad. Um, it's a, it, we, we still almost won the game. It's, that's because we have a lot of talent. But like, I want you to understand that. Like we're playing like uh, off players with lots of gaps, right? So it's just a terrible system we're at right now during this transition phase while we're learning it. So my apologies, but we're gonna, we're gonna push through it so we can become great. All right, so way long enough to mark up. And look, that's where the ball's gonna go. Okay, you see it? Too easy, right? Everybody agree that's too easy? If, yes. we, were playing, if we were playing a zonal system, is that pass okay? Yes. Yeah, everybody's played a zonal system. That pass would be fine. It would go here, and then the next guy would step up. We're not playing a zonal system. We're looking for interceptions. So this is bad because everyone else is running around, wasting energy. And this is – now we had to defend for how long, guys? Ten seconds. When I tell you that the man marking will not be that, that taxing on your body, once we start actually doing it better, once you start doing it better, we're going to win the ball back quicker, and we're going to be able to open up and possess the ball. And we're going, to get our, we're going to get our lungs back. All right, I promise you. But now we're chasing. So now he's going to play it. He didn't even play it to him. Because why? This is too easy. So when someone said, this is a great question. Someone asked, I've been asked this multiple times. Should the fullback cover the guy on the weak side? So the, yes. answer, the answer is, it's complicated. For me, we're going to, okay? In other systems, you don't. You allow that ball, right? We're not going to allow it. We're going to intercept it. Now, you might say, but why not come in and give extra cover? I already have extra cover. See them? See them? Why do I need two players there? Is this, is this, is this Neymar or Messi? We have to go 3v1 against him? It's a serious question. Do we need to go 3, 3v1 against the strikers in these leagues? No. No. So, and the other thing you're going to gain, and this is very interesting. If our left back is right on him, ready for the interception, first things first, the guy won't even play the ball. Right? So now he's screwed. He's going to play a shorter pass that will intercept higher up the pitch. We'll intercept it here. We'll play shorter passes or back passes. He won't even see that escape route. And then the other interesting thing is, if we're here, and they do play the ball, and we intercept, and we look where we are going. Or, or if we intercept the ball here, right, somewhere in here, and our left back is here, can he now make a quick run forward because he's right on the guy's back? The answer is yes. We're in a better offensive position. We're still safe defensively because of the libero, but we're in a better offensive position by moving a defensive piece away from the middle because we are covered. It's like chess, the theory in chess, where you don't waste, you don't put extra defensive, more defensive pieces back than you need. You don't use extra pieces for defense because it hurts your offense. So I want to gain, I have enough defense, I want to gain offense. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, everybody? 
yes, uh, that specific play starts with a really, I mean, starts with not being marked, but then I take a really bad angle of approach and allow them to play back into their free men. I should keep him going toward. Want to go, want to go to back to that? Yeah. Five seconds. I, I don't know why I thought I should overcompensate, but I shouldn't be stepping to take away that pass I first. That. I should lead him into Preston's area to force him either to the center back or to the player wide. I allow I'm gonna, him. To- I'm going to be gentle on you because we don't have. So one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the issues is normally, let me go back even further. Let me be. So you would be cover shadowing from here. So let's start with that because so, I'm, I'm mm. saying you wouldn't even be in this situation, but we'll get to it in a second. But like, let's say you would immediately go this way. So now you're behind him, right? Mm-hmm. Going this way. But let's say we don't get it and they bounce past it to your guy, right? Which is what they do. Okay. Now, like I said, you would have been coming at him straight. Okay. But that's okay. You're coming at him this way. We don't necessarily, we're not necessarily forcing in any direction with this defense. And that's going to sound crazy to a lot of us. We don't really have, but it looks like Noah's forcing him to the sideline. But at the end of the day, what he's really doing with the cover shadow is yes, it's doing it in that in most instances, but we don't really care because um, we're really just trying to stop forward progression of the ball. So, the, so, so, for um, how do I say this? Whereas a lot of teams press to the sideline, we we when the ball goes to the sideline, we're like, that's great, but we 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 press to not allow the ball to go forward, except in the air long. Does that make sense? Except in the air long, and even when it goes on the ground forward, that twenty meter pass, thirty yard pass, we're trying to intercept it and stop. Stop even the ball getting defeat. So our defense is we, we're trying to stop all forward progress. Does that start to make a little bit more sense? So we're gonna we're you know to a certain extent they may get away with some side passes now and again. Okay, we're not trying to necessarily push them to one side or the other. When it happens, it's just a bonus because now we can use the sideline as a defender. But we're trying to stop all, all forward progress and stay in their end of the pitch. We want to stay on their side of the field, which is going to offensively is going to require us to learn how to break a deep block eventually. That's, that's what's coming next, but not today. It's going to, you're, you're going to have a game soon where we're going to be – the defense, our defense is going to be so good, we're going to be in their end and we're not going to know how to break the block. But we might win the game just off of pressing and getting counters off of winning the ball and scoring quickly. But eventually, if we get re- when we get really good, the teams are just going to say, fuck this, and they're going to drop, damn it. Um, they're going to drop into a deep block, and we're going to have to break it. But we're not there yet. So, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Like, you're, you're stopping the forward progress, and you're forcing it to go that way. The problem is, you, you, even if you know that, like, let's pretend this guy has to be covered. In our defense, so I'm not even going to humor anything else. This guy has to be covered, right? This player has to be up here. Okay, this is fine. Okay, this. What well, I think this is Marcelo. Marcelo can cover shadow this. See, the danger is because this guy is not marked. This player can Marcelo would go to cover shadow. So let's pretend Marcelo goes here, right? The ball gets sent here. Marcelo's man, he can't cover his man anymore in the cover shadow, right? That's the danger. What do we want this guy to do? Not only do we want him on him, but who knows from practice what I, where where what what I want that what what I want taken away? The lane. The lane. I want the bounce pass taken away. So not only this guy would approach, this guy would already be looking to take away the bounce pass back in. Because he would recognize, and we practice this every day of practice, we talk about this, that when, when we have someone cover shadowing and they leave this man open, we know he's open, but this player cannot play directly to him, but he can use a link player. 
So the job of the man marker is to take away the bounce or link back into the guy being cover shadow. Does that make sense? I know it makes sense to my guys that have been in practice. Does it make sense to the guys that are just a tactical? Anybody give me a thumbs up, thumbs down? That's good. Do you understand that, right? This is where we're getting advanced, where this guy is literally – that allows Marcelo to dump – to send a second player on this player. The ball cannot be directly played to him, only through a link. And teams are used to doing this. They're used to linking and playing around you. We take away the link with the man mark because we don't play off on the zone. Everybody got that? Good. I saw a thumbs up. Okay. It's going to be great when we do it. All right. Let's let it play. All right. Right there, we would have been able to challenge that, right? We all understand that now. Okay. Okay. Whose ball is this? Looks like theirs because we're backing up. So this is a great opportunity to mark up. And, and marking up means, get, like, this guy needs to be marked. Okay. Because we talk. Because when we win the ball, when we win the ball, I want this guy, I want you to understand this. Don't go to the ball. Stay here. Because when we win it, this guy's going to go where? Where is he going to unmark to? More than likely. Forward, backward, side, where would you unmark? I'm unmarking forward, right? We win the ball, and the guy has some time. We intercept it. This guy, whoever's supposed to be marking him, should be mar go forward. No, it could be like making a flat run this way, drag this guy out. This guy could immediately go into that vacated space. All right. We're now, if there was a guy here, and we won the ball. Noah would occupy one center back. Okay. Or Noah could even run this way, drag that center back out. And now we have, a, you know, one, one player on us. Okay. 2v2. We want 2v2s against their center backs. So look, someone is not marking someone. See it? And it's right here. See it? Now, how do you fix that? This player should recognize that he's not marking anyone. Right? Is that T-Ben right there? I can't even tell. Yeah, that's T-Ben. So T-Ben's got his mark. I want him even closer. You see where as good as T-Ben is, is he still worried about, is he still worried about the ball over the top? Because he's used to playing with like a flat back four with no sweeper, no, no the barrel. You see it? As good as T-Ben is, you see he's still a little worried that ball's gonna go over the top. I want you guys right on these guys. All right. Don't you, don't worry about it. the ball goes. Gion should be sitting here. Even closer because it's throwing, right? So if that ball goes over T-Ben's head, T-Ben still has two. Uh, I only want like a two-yard cushion. T-Ben can still run with him. So can this guy, and Gion should be able to get it. Gion has to be better at positioning himself to stop the long throws. All right? This guy should be up on this player, up on him, up on the players. It's going to scare the other team. All right? So this player, here's how you fix it. This player, right now, Gion should be telling this player, you go to this level, and you go to this level. You see it? You see the fix? Everybody see it? Everything else is perfect. We're just off by once. This is not bad. If this is all, if this is the stage we're at, we're 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 almost there. Okay. This will be fixed quickly. Has everybody got that? Give me a uh, thumbs up. Uh, take your thumb down now for the next one. Okay, ball here. What should we be doing right now? Opening up as quickly as we can. There's nobody here. We were just on defense. So this has to happen. It has to be a sprint out to help our left back, our right back. Have you understand that? He, he needs help. If we're going to possess the ball and not just have to blast it or play it back into pressure, we need an outlet here. It needs to be fast. Let's see how fast it is. Too slow. See it? Too slow. Too slow. See that jog? But everybody see Preston on. Is that how fast Preston is? Or is he faster than that? You don't want to throw Preston under the bus. Look at that. Is that good enough or does that need to be better? Now he, he beat him, but 
I want, I want that ball. You don't know that's because Hobbs is a really good player. You don't want to rely on that. Okay. Is our striker too far away for that ball? Question. Yes. Yeah, it should have been. So the principles of play, no matter, don't take my system, don't everybody's system in the world. These are universal principles of play that I'm going to give you. We have our own principles of play that are different than Man City or different than United German Hungarians, but there's universal principles of play. And one of them is, is death. You cannot get penetration at the top if you don't have depth. Penetration is also a principle, but you need depth to penetrate. Or how, how are you ever going to penetrate if you're not deep? Right? If your whole team is back, so we broke the principle of, of depth. We attempted, a pen, we attempted to penetrate, but our striker was not deep enough. Was there any reason for him to be there? Maybe he was checking in because Preston was too slow, and that's a problem, right? Everything's tied together in, in soccer. So maybe, maybe Noah saw Preston. Let's go back and watch Noah. I don't want to be too harsh on him. But he's deep right now. Okay. He needs to see him checking, maybe because he, he thought, okay, but it's not good. See, it's not gonna, he's never gonna beat that guy. And that guy's no offense to this guy, but he was that way, he was a bit of a chubby guy. Remember? All right, that run should have been flat across the line. Everybody understand that? Then he could have turned it upfield. But now he's giving that guy like a five, five yard head start. Everybody understand? Good. Give me a thumbs up. Very important, guys. It's the difference between scoring and not scoring. Okay. See it? Now, now there's no shot. See? No shot. Look at the chubby guy outrun him. See it? Okay. Now we should be doing what, guys? Marking. So let's go. All right. We had the ball, so let's give ourselves a chance to mark. All right. We go back. He has it right here. Okay. This Preston needs to do what to this guy? His goal, his number one goal right now. Can he intercept the ball? Can he no. intercept? The ball? No. So what's his second best thing he can do? Stay on his back in the leg. Don't let him turn. Okay. Third is don't let him, don't let him DQ. But so number one interception. Number two, don't let him turn. So let's see how he does. It. And I hope it's not lazy, Preston, because you're on you're everybody's watching you. Is that too slow? Did he did he just allow him to turn? Yeah. Not good enough. I think I told somebody, like, you know, we're gonna be playing this tape back. You don't you don't want to be the guy that this happens to. Well, nobody's man marking at that point. Yeah, but you don't want to be this guy that we just keep rewinding it. And watch the laziness. See it? You don't well, in his defense, everybody thought the ball was going out of bounds. So, well, you can't. I mean, you, 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 is that is that something where you're allowed to do in, in the game, or do you have to play? You have to play till it goes out. I'm not sure. 100 positive. So he was wrong. So he, that that was not a guarantee that was going to go out. So it needs to be better. All right. So he has it now. We've had time to mark up, even if we thought it was going out of bounds. Let's see how long we've had. There's the inefficient run. Let's get the mark. Okay, let's say I'll call it five. Five seconds, 77.05. All right, we should be doing what right now? He should be pressing aggressively up on him. Okay, our strikers already got both guys covered. Okay, um, this guy should be an easy mark. See them? Okay, this guy can mark both of these until help arrives. Agreed? Should he mark? He should mark both until help arrives. All right, but help need to arrive. Who's the help going to come from? One of these two should be right now going. Gian should be pushing the line up to make all these guys off sides. Okay. And where the other problem is one, two, three. That's good. We have three guys back here. So this is fine. They should be pushing the line up 
and then that'll force these players offside. Hamza, that's fine if he wants to cover shadow this guy right now, as long as he knows that not to get beat over the top. But these, there is a, this, these players, these two players need to be doing what? You see them? What's, what's their job right now? Move up on them. Up on who? Let's see, right? If, if we said T-Ben's going to get him, okay, once we push the line up, all right, this guy will be marked by him, and then Gian will go back to the free, right? Hans will get him. So if we're, if we're communicating effectively, the back line should already now, by now, start to realize that they're, that they're in good shape, and they've got to call the marks out for these two. You understand? Okay. If you're not sure, look behind you first and say, where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? Like, look for help. For now, I'll look for help because this guy should be deployed here and this guy should be deployed here and this guy should be deployed here. We need to pick up down their midfield. Who's the, who moves the ball for other teams? They turn it through the midfield. We need to shut down the midfielders from the other team. Not let them turn. Make their life a living hell. Do not give the midfielders time and space on the ball. Question. Can you be really aggressive against the midfielder because you have an ungodly amount of help behind you? Yes or no? Yes. 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 I need three aggressive midfielders to play for us that are going to make the other three midfielders' life a living hell. Knowing that if you get beat, you just your other midfielder covers for you until you can plant your foot and get back, or your fullback covers for you for a second and covers too. I need three aggressive hunters out there to make their life a living hell. And then, we, and then when we win the ball, to quickly move the ball and get, let's possess the ball and unmark. That's what I need from my midfielders. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? That's the job. It's going to be a fun job, but that's it. We, we want to, okay, if we need it. It's the hardest job. We already, everybody already knows that it's easier for the fullback because you, in any system, the fullback's using man marking. Everybody, everybody knows that, right? In any system, at, at any given time, one of the center backs is man marking the striker. They're, they're taking turns or they're both man marking someone because there's two strikers, right? Anybody that's played on the back line knows this, right? You, you're always you're not letting is anybody played in a system where you allow the 10 to receive in the hole and you don't man mark them is anybody played in a system like that where you allow that where the center defensive mid allows a 10 to receive the ball in turn tell me if you have no one right no one's played in a system like that so the the, the back four and the and the six are already used to man marking so don't tell me you don't you haven't man marked before and that means you've never played on a back line before of course you have midfielders aren't used to it like the eight and ten aren't used to it the six should be used to it because if the six is not used to it then i don't want to watch game film of you playing in college because that means that the 10 is running rampant everybody agree with that if you're not used to stopping the 10 from turning okay that 10 is having a field day on you he probably made all conference or whatever they call it so but the 8 and 10 sometimes play more zonal in systems. So I understand that. But now we're going to be up on their backs. Okay? I need my 8 and 10 to be more aggressive. So you hear Marcel. Marcel always usually played the 8 and 10. So you hear what he's saying. He's like, I'm not used to this. Ian is saying, like, I'm not used to this. I understand. But everyone else should be used to it that's in the back. All right? So we're gonna give we're gonna be more patient with them, but that's what we need, right, guys? Does that does that make sense? What I'm saying now, there's a reason for your uncomfortableness. I'm okay with it, but but I know you. I know we're gonna get there, right? We need to get on these guys, and you can see if you're on these guys, that's gonna be if Preston's on this guy's back, right? And and Noah is is poised to take out both did he to press one of these guys real quickly. And then we're up on this guy. We're up on this guy. We're up on this guy. What are they going to do? You guys have played soccer long enough. No. What are they going to do? Make a bad pass. You're going to make a bad pass. 
We're this close. We're getting that. We're this close, guys. I'm telling you, we're this close. It's not going to take long. All right. I, but we are at eight o'clock. So I'm going to let you go. All right. Um, I think I'm on a podcast. If you just want to listen and get the guys extra views, I'll post it in the chat. There's some guys doing about our open cup. He's, he's going to interview, interview me about Kenzie Naveen in the open cup. I, um, so I'll, I'll post up the, or can someone post up the link for everybody? Can someone find it? I think it's, it's on Instagram or Twitter. Cause I, I gotta, I gotta get some tea. So my voice isn't crackling and then maybe we can get the guys some extra views or something. All right. I'll put it in the group. Thank you. So, all right. All right. Good to talk to everybody. I'm going to stop the recording. All right. Cool. Thanks for the walkthrough coach. Guys. Thanks Jen. Later, guys. I love coaching you guys. It's, it's a pleasure. All right. Stop the recording.